जय सीताराम बालकांड चैप्टर ट्वेंटी नाइन इन द प्रीवियस सेक्शन वी लर्न इन ग्रेट डिटेल अबाउट द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ हाउ द लॉर्ड अपियर्ड एज वामन देवर दिस इज टेकन फ्राम श्रीमद भागवतम एट डॉट एटीन टू एट डॉट ट्वेंटी थ्री वॉज डैजलिंग विद इज क्लब कॉन्च डिस्क एंड लोटस वेरिंग एक्स्ट्रॉडनरी गार्लेंट्स एंड येलो गार्मेंट्स द देवत हज प्रेज हिम एवरीवेयर दे वॉज ग्रेट जुबुलेशन देन ही अस्यूम द फॉर्म ऑफ अ वामना और अ डॉर्फ हिज सेक्रेट थ्रेड सेरेमनी वॉज कंडक्टेड विद ग्रेट ऑस्टोरिटी He then went to the sacrificial arena of Bali's yagna, and Bali paid him great respect and asked him to request anything that he wanted. And the Lord asked for three paces of land in charity. Against Sukracharya's wishes, Bali Maharaj acquiesced to the Lord's request. The Lord immediately expanded into a universal body and displayed His various paraphernalia. And The Lord gradually covered the entire surface. There was no vacant place where he could take his third footstep, and Bali was tied up by Garuda with Varuna Pasha. And the Lord asked him for his third step, and Bali Maharaja agreed with great pleasure to give his head as charity in the place of the Lord's third step. Pralad Maharaj Brahma and Bali's wife described the supremacy of the Lord and Bali completely surrendered to the Lord and then later on Bali and his associates go to Sutila the Lord also goes with him and the Lord satisfied the desires of Aditi mother and reinstalled Lord Indra so this is given in Shrimad Bhagavatam 8.18 through 23 But the gist of these chapters is mentioned in Valmiki Ramayana. Now that we know the background in great detail, it will be easier for us to understand the summary as mentioned by Sage Vishwamitra, verses twenty and twenty-one. Trin padan atha bikshitva prati grihya cha medhinim. आक्रम्य लोकान लोकार्थो सर्व लोका हिते रथ महेन्द्राय पुनः प्रादात नियम्य बलिम ओजस त्रैलोक्यम स महातेज चक्रे शक्र वशम पुनः लॉर्ड विष्णु अप्रोच्ड बली एज अ डॉर्फ एंड सेड ओ ग्रेट गिवर ग्रैंड मी दिस प्रेयर ऑफ माइंड थ्री शॉर्ट फीट ऑफ अर्थ एंड ही गॉट इट Thrice did he put forth his mighty feet, and the three worlds were covered with it. Bali was shorn of his overwhelming pride and might, and Vamana gave back the sovereignty of the worlds to Indra. Now, one may wonder why Sage Vishwamitra did not give a very detailed history of Vamana's avatar in Valmiki Ramayana, and a Reason is that Shukadev Goswami gave this detailed explanation to Parikshit Maharaj, and thereby he enlightened the entire world. But Lord Rama's question was to describe the significance of Siddhashrama, and Lord Rama is none other than Vamana Deva himself, and he obviously knows the entire story. But still, just to carry on the story. Vishwamitra gives a gist of it, and he emphasizes the part where Vamana Deva goes and begs for charity from his own devotee, and thus he saves this entire world. The Lord is completely renounced, and that's the reason why he is Bhagavan. He possesses this opulence of renunciation. and so he doesn't mind going and asking something of bali maharaj so drawing the parallel between vamana deva's avatar and rama avatar we can see that rama too had no qualm spending 14 years in the forest and then finally killing ravana in great battle he was completely renounced Sage Vishwamitra is highlighting the kind aspect of the Lord who always protects his devotees 
and Vamnadeva protected Mother Aditi and Kashipa and gave the sovereignty of the worlds to Indra per Aditi Mother's request. And here, Sage Vishwamitra wants the Lord to help protect his rights. One other reason why the sage does not go into great detail is because probably in Treta Yuga, everyone was familiar with the story of Vamana Deva and it did not require some very specific elucidation. But right now, towards the end of Dwapara Yuga and towards the beginning of Kali Yuga, it became absolutely essential to have all the facts jotted down so that the people of Kali Yuga can refer to the great pastimes of the Lord. And Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken 5,000 years ago by Shukadev Goswami to Parikshit Maharaj. And of course, the great sages of yore knew that in Kali Yuga, the memory of people is going to rapidly deteriorate. And therefore, every pastime is given a great amount of attention, great detail for posterity so that the future generations can understand what's going on. But this wasn't the case in Treta Yuga, and people were quite familiar with the various pastimes of the Lord. Verse 22. Ten eva purvam akranta ashrama shrama nashana maya api bhaktiya tasya eva vamanasya upabhujyate this hermitage is ever associated with the presence of the Lord and ever my heart turns to it with unbounded devotion to Him. Verse 23 Enam ashramam ayanti rakshasa vigna karinaha atrate purusha vyaghra hantavya dushta charinaha here do the Rakshasas resort, the untiring enemies of the peaceful sages and their sacrifices. And here it is, you should lay them low, the evil ones. Verse 24. Adya gacha mahe rama siddhashramam anuttamam tat ashrama padam tata tava api etad yathamama. This day shall we reach it, the holy Siddhashrama, and it is yours as much as it is mine. So sage Vishamitra concludes this narration by saying that because of his extreme faith towards Lord Vamanadeva, despite having the onslaught of the Rakshasas, he chooses to stay in Siddhashrama. And he also says that Siddhashrama belongs to Lord Rama just as much as it belongs to him. It means that everything that belongs to Vishwamitra belongs to Lord Rama. So once again, Vishwamitra proves that he is not the proprietor. The Lord is the proprietor. Another very important point is because Siddhashrama is a dharma, Vishwamitra wants to continue to stay over there despite so many inconveniences. The devotees don't look at the many inconveniences they merely take a look at how sacred that dharma is. This is extremely important for us to learn as well. And we should understand that the reason why Vishwamitra wants these Rakshasas to be eliminated is because he can conduct the rites which are going to be beneficial to the multiple devotees of the Lord. Verse 25. Iti uktva paramo prito grahya ramam sa lakshmanam pravishan ashrama padam vyarochata mahamunihi shashi iva gata niharaha punar vasu samanvitaha. Very soon they were within the sacred precincts, and then it was that Vishwamitra shone in all his glory, even as a cloudless moon resplendent in the constellation of punar vasu. Verse 26. Tam drishtva muniya sarve siddhashrama nivasinaha utpatyot patya sahasa vishwamitram apujayan. Verse 27. Yatha arham chakrire pujam vishwamitraya dhimate tathaiva raja putra bhyam akurvan atithi kriyam. 
There he was welcomed by the numerous ascetics of saintly life that made Siddhashrama their home. Right reverently did they accord unto him due worship, and no less hearty was the welcome they extended to the princely pair. Verse 28 Mohurtam atha vishranto raja putro arindamau pranjali muni shardulam uchatu raghunandanau. The two princely sages of Raghu's dynasty and the enemy subjugators, namely Rama and Lakshmana, rested themselves for a while and, approaching their master with adjoining palms, spoke eagerly to the tigerly sage Vishwamitra. Verse 29 Adya eva diksham pravisha bhadram te muni pungava siddhashramo ayam siddha syat satyam astu vachahatava. Lord, if thou so wilt, thou mayst take upon thyself the sacrificial vow even today. Rightly has this place been named Siddhashrama, for thy object shall of a truth be realized here. Verse 30 Evam ukto mahateja vishwamitro mahan rishihi pravivesha tada diksham niyato niyatendriya ha. May your words prove true, replied Vishwamitra, and with restrained senses and concentrated mind did he take upon himself the initiatory vows. Verses 31 and 32. Kumaro evatam ratrim ushitva su samahito prabhatakale cha uthaya purva sandhyam upasicha prasuchi param japyam samapya niyamena cha huta agnihotram asinam vishwamitram avandatam. In that peaceful hermitage, the princess passed the night in the sweet company of the holy sages. At the dawn of day, they were up and offering their prayers to the goddess of twilight. Their religious observances for the morning over and the mystical recitation of the mantras, they touched the feet of the teacher, who, having finished their offerings unto the fire god, was seated in calm repose. So the first night that they stay away from Ayodhya was spent on the banks of river Sarayu. The second night was in Kamashrama. The third night was in Tataka's forest. And the fourth night is in Siddhashrama. It is very important for us to remember the days. This concludes this chapter. In the next chapter, we are going to see how the Lord helps protect the sacrifice of Sage Vishamitra. Mangalam Koshalindraya, Mahaniya Gunapdiya, Chakravarti Dhanurajaya, Sarva Bhomaya Mangalam. Jai Sitaram.